All right, all right, we are ready. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is good. This is good. Good to see everybody. Feel like everybody's in a good mood today. That's 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 good. That's good. The sun is out and we are here. Amen. We are here. So that's a good thing. Everybody is looking bright. Everybody's looking saved and blessed. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. All right. So we want to welcome you to the Barnes United Methodist Church. We're located on the corner of 900 West 30th Street, and our pastor is Reverend Dr. Charles R. Harrison. You know, I ask always to give it up for him for the great work that he does. So put our hands together for him and our first lady who is here with us today. Amen, amen. We want you to invite you to share this with someone who may be watching via Facebook Live, Twitter, or either on YouTube. We want you to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just want to say it is just good to be here. It is good to be here. In whatever conditions we're in, it is just good to be here. We're going to go ahead and get into our lesson of love today, and I'm going to move through this fairly quickly. I want you to follow me. This comes from Psalms 119, Psalm 119, Psalm 119. And I'm going to, you can read uh, verses 1 through 10 in your own time. I want to focus on in on verse 11. And it reads like this. It says, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? That thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Decide of the title this one, the battle for the Bible. The battle for the Bible. Many of you may have saw the movie, The Book of Eli. It came out about 2010. So I'm going to take you through that movie real quick because it plays a key role in this scripture. Uh, the Battle of Eli is a, po a post-apocalyptic story taking place in 2043 in which a lone man fights his way traveling uh, west across America in order to protect a sacred book that holds the secrets to saving humankind. You have to catch all these nuggets along as we go. Amen. Carnegie, which is played by Gary Oldman, he is looking for a certain book, so he sends his illiterate henchmen to collect all the books that they can. He sees the books that they bring, a random collection of paperback books and picture books, and it is le he is less than pleased. He orders that the books be, would be burned, amen? He orders that the books would be burned. So guess what? In any movie, we know that temptations arise, correct? So Redrick, Redrich sends Claudia to deliver Eli, which is played by Denzel Washington, food and offers Claudia's daughter, Solara, to seduce Eli to try to get him to stay in town. Eli recognizes that Claudia is blind and asks her if she was blind her whole life or blinded by the flash in an event that which occurred during the last great war. She confirms that she was blind her whole life. Claudia begs Redrich uh, not to not to use Solara, but uh, he sends her anyway. Solara begins uh, begs him and uh, lets him stay. Watch this. Let's Solara begs him to let her stay in the room since she knows Carnegie will harm Claudia. Claudia and Eli talk about the war, and uh, Solara sits on the bed, discovers the book, and gets excited, wanting to know more about it. Even though she cannot read, she wants to know more about it. Eli bundles the book up and refuses to discuss it with Solara. Red Ridge, then he uh, beats Claudia in front of Solara in order to find out that if Eli had the book that he actually seeks. When Solara signs him the cross, she signed him the cross she saw, that she saw on the cover Carnegie orders Redrich to bring the book to him. When they get to the room, they see that Eli has snuck out. Redrich kills the guard on duty and gathers the men to find him. Across the street, Eli gathers his battery and prepares to leave. Carnegie, watch this, then goes over to Eli and begs him to stay and give him the book. 
What was the book? A Bible. A Bible. Watch this. Carnegie tells Eli that he isn't afraid to kill him and take the Bible. Hmm? We're going somewhere with this. Watch this. The next day, Solara and Eli set off and walked west. Solara asked him about the word, about the world before the war. Watch this. He tells her, he tells her that the people had more than they needed and threw away the things that others kill for today. Hmm. Huh. She asked him why, watch this, she asked him why he keeps the book, and Eli explains that it is the only Bible left in the world since it was singled out for destruction after the war. Wow. He, he then explains why he keeps heading west, which perplexes Solara, but she eventually comes to accept that Eli is acting on his faith. Sounds like scripture to me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He explains how he found the Bible, insisting that a voice told him where to go, that he would be protected. Solara thinks Eli is delusional, but saying nothing sounds like scripture to me. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice you shall not follow. Uh, I, my God, you got to watch this. I'm giving you all the points as we go through. A standoff ensues. Carnegie threatens Solara, but watch this. Redridge entreats Eli to surrender the book, and Eli tells Redridge where he found it. Redridge uh, recovers the book and gives it to Carnegie, who then releases Solara. He says, God is good, and Eli responds, all the time. Carnegie responds, well, not all the time, and then he begins to shoot Eli in the stomach. He puts Solara in one of the va one of the vans with Redridge, and then uh, the driver, and he takes the book with him in the other van. Solara apologizes for losing losing Eli's book, and but Eli responds to her. Watch this. His but his response is that it's time he put the lessons he learned to use to do more for others than what you do for yourself. I'm gonna say that again. It is time to put the lessons he learned to use and to do more for others than what you do for yourself. An armed guard calls out to the pair and Eli responds that he has uh, what he has in his possession. He has a King James Bible in his possession and the guard lets him in. How many of you know that the word is key to getting you into places that you never got? Woo, y'all missing all of this. My God. Eli is then taken to Lombardi, which is played by Malcolm uh, McDowell, the curator of Alcatraz. Lombardi tells Eli that, he, that they have been missing a copy of the Bible, so Eli tells him to get a lot of paper and pen. Watch this. He starts to recite the Bible word for word, having memorized it over 30 years. Woo! Back in town, Carnegie tries to open the Bible, but realized he didn't take Eli, he didn't take Eli's key to the uh, book flap. Watch this. He calls the engineer to unlock the book, and once it's unlocked, they see the Bible is written in Braille. In Alcatraz, a close-up of Eli's face shows us, shows us, watch this, that Eli is blind as well. My God, my God. What happened? Eli had memorized the book. In Alcatraz, e Eli shaves his hair and changes into a clean white robe. Then he recites the Bible to completion while Lombardi writes it down verbatim. So what, what are we talking about? We, I, I, and all of us coming up, we are coming up on a place and even in some places now in 2022, the battle for the Bible in contemporary America. My God, I hope y'all listening. The battle for the Bible in, tempor in contemporary America. My question to us today is this, as I could wrap this up. What would happen if the Bible was outlawed here in America? What would happen if believers were jailed for preaching the gospel? What would happen if the laws were passed to confiscate and burn all Bibles? This movie, The Book of Eli, was set in 2043. We're now in 2022. That is not that far away. It could very well be a possibility for the things to happen or things to come, given the backwards direction and the ideas of our society today. Amen? Watch this. Psalms 119 stated, Thy word have I hid in thine heart that I might not sin against thee. 
Do we have enough word in our hearts that we might not sin against God if the Bibles were taken away? Ooh, did you hear me? Watch this. That we might not sin against God. Not man, not your boo, not your bae, not your friends, not your family, but we might not sin against God. There's a difference when we're dealing with man, pastor, and when we're dealing with God. There's a difference. Watch this. We now are studying revelations in a Bible study, and God told the seven churches, I have an issue with each of you, each of the seven churches. See, there's a difference when we have issues with each other, and there's a difference when God has an issue with you. Woo! Have we studied enough? Have we meditated enough? Have we let God's word penetrate our hearts enough? If all the Bibles were taken up off the earth, do you or do we, do we all have a place to run and we have no place to run and look nothing up? So watch this. As I close, we should know and live God's word so tough that when situations arise, watch this. Scripture just starts to bubble up in our spirit and just scripture starts to bubble up in our spirit. My God. And guess what? And it's not just your favorite scripture either. Do you have some scriptures tucked away in your heart that will keep you in times of trouble? Scriptures. My God, scriptures like Denzel's character in the movie, although he was blind and he could not see, he had memorized and protected the word to a degree that he was able to recite verbatim and it helped him and lead him out of trouble to make it to the place God had destined for him. Do we have enough word hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against God? Oh, my God. I'm done. Our Father and our God, we truly thank you today, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we want more of you. We want more of the word that we might not sin even uh, against you, oh God. We want to be saved. We want to be sanctified. We want to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, oh God. Come in now into this presence, oh God. Come in now into this sanctuary, oh God, and have your way as the choir and the word comes forth. And even the people that are going to watch this later, oh God, send a special blessing their way in Jesus' name, we pray the battle for the Bible. Got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm here. Oh, I feel had some ups, had some downs, level to the ground, but I feel, oh, I feel had to wrestle all that long, wondering what went wrong, but I feel, oh, I feel had some sunshine and some rain, heartache and some pain, I'm here. I've here got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Have some ups and some downs, level to the ground, but I'm here. Oh, I'm here. I had to wrestle all night long. Wondering what's going to come, but I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Got some sunshine, some rain, heartache, and some pain. I'm here. Oh, I'm here. My God has touched me, delivered. He says, my soul free. My heart is there. Okay.
my praise, Lord, you're worthy of my praise, the ways you've made for me. All right. The doors you've opened for me.
me. When all hell was breaking loose, you kept me. You raised me. You saved 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 me. Now I thank you. I thank you. God kept you. How many glad that God never left you? When you look back over your life and everything he brought you from, you can't help but to say hallelujah. You can't help but to say thank you Jesus. You can't help but to say glory. How I got over. My soul looks back and wonder how I made it over through hell, through trials, through tribulations, through heartache, through pain, I made it over. Tell your neighbor, I, I made it over. Through the storm, through the rain, through the heartache, through your sickness, I made it over. Through the ups, through the downs, when you leveled to the time I made it, I No matter what you go through, from day to day, if you put your hands in the hands of the master, he's able to sustain you. Hey! He's a good guy. Today is our youth Sunday. Come on, y'all give God some praise for the Youth Sunday. And Sister Brandy Red has been working with these babies. Y'all, come on, come on, give it up for your babies. These are your babies. This is their official day. We'll let them sing and amen. Give God praise. Hey, go on and praise him, sister. He's been good to you, sister. Can we help her praise him? One, two, one, two, three, four. Go ahead, sister. Can y'all help her? Praise him. Listen. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do yes, your will. To your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Lord, I serve you. Lord, I'll do your will. Yes, Lord. Hey, open your mouth and shout it. Yes, Lord. Ja. 
church. This is a poem that I wrote by me. I tell myself many things. I give myself many things to be great about. I put a smile on my face as people tell me my dimples are cute. And yet, I feed myself with depression and stress and more terrible things that people tell me not to do. I tell myself not to do it, but I can't go one day without thinking bad at myself. I pray that God sets me free and gives me a blessing, but every time I get an opportunity, I choose to blow it. I cry every time I think about all the stuff I've done to myself. I think it's normal, but is it really? I sit on my bed thinking about what I've gone through and how it has affected my life now. People tell me I'm smart, but am I? Why do I feel like I have no backbone? All these years I have been beating myself up to put that smile right back on my face, but yet every time I choose to put a smile on that face, my frown forms with guilt. Why have I been doubting myself? I feel like a bird that wants to leave her nest, but she's too scared to leave her nest because she worries what's going to happen when she leaves. She's afraid to leave her comfort zone. Yet, I find nobody around me either. Why do I even say that I try when all I do is sit there and say nothing? What do I think I should do? I say that what my life has felt like as I get older. I pray that God becomes strong and lets me stand on my two feet that he gave me. I use my two hands that God gave me to work and take care of myself. So I'm standing here today to tell myself to be the person that I want to be and to let people see the smile that God gave me. I want to give people the chance to come out of their comfort zone. I want to be that bird that leaves the nest and fly like it's never tomorrow. To this day, I am still flying, flying for God and flying for the things I love. Thank you. These are our young people. God is doing something great, amen. One more time for our young people. Come on, y'all can do better than that bar. One more time for these young people. Thank you, Brandy Red. Excellent. How excellent it is. 
Let's bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Amen. 
And to the young people, we want to give them a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, it's good when your kids have an excitement for the Lord and they want to do things. Amen. And, and they make sure that, amen, that in the midst of your schedule that you make sure that they get to church and, um, you know, they're doing the things they want to do for the Lord. Amen. And my, my kids are always coming up with ideas of things they want to do for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And, and um, that's exciting. Amen. That when you have young people on fire for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're at this point in the service now. And, and Sean, I'm, we're going to bring that table over here. I'm going to use that table. Praise God. And put it right here. That we give back to God a portion of what God blesses us with. Amen. And, and this is the time in the service where, praise God, for our tithes and offerings. Amen. And there are people who are watching on social media right now who are active part of our church. Amen. And, and everybody doesn't watch it, you know, at the time we do the service, but all during the week people are tuning in and, and watching the service and we give God glory. And, and, and many of them are, are making, you know, financial contributions to the church because they like what the church is doing. They like our service, you know, and they're giving them time. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And we ought not to, to ever miss an opportunity, praise God, just to give something back to God. Amen. So for those who are watching, um, we invite you to be a part of this portion of our service. You can go to Giblify if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, go under Barnes United Methodist Church and you can give your tithe and offering for those in the sanctuary who like to give that way, you can do that too, because many give online. And then for the rest of us, we invite you now to come forward as you bring your tithe and your offering. And let me just pray, God, we just thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. And we now pray, God, that you would bless the tithes and offerings that would be brought forth. We pray that you bless those who give and then those who want to give but had it not. And we pray, God, that these tithes and offerings would only be used for the building of thy kingdom. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. And can the church say together, amen. We invite you now to come, amen. Praise God, praise God, amen, amen, praise God, praise God, amen, praise God. Would you join me this morning in the New Testament in the Gospel of John chapter 6? Would you join me in the Gospel of John chapter 6, praise God, and we will look together at one verse, verse number 35, amen. 
the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. Praise God. When you found it, we ask that you stand as we honor the reading of God's word. Amen. And I just want to just take a moment out this morning. And I know we're heading into Easter in, in about four more weeks. Um, praise God. And uh, get into a lot of the, the, the story surrounding Easter and preach. But I just want to take a moment out today and, and just teach a little bit and, and give some illustrations. And, and I hope that you will be blessed by it. Praise God. In the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verse number 35, and hear these words that are recorded. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. May the Lord now bless the reading and the hearing of his divine word, and let the people of God say together, Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. About 17 years ago, I started noticing some changes in my health. And I started noticing that I was having a hard time seeing. And I was tired and was very sluggish. So I just had a blood test done and I remember Several days later, I received a phone call telling me that I needed to go in to see my doctor. So I made the appointment, and at that moment, I knew that there was something going on while I was being asked to see my doctor. So when I got in to see my doctor, my doctor informed me that I was a type 2 diabetic. I was in my early 40s trying to deal with the news that I now was a diabetic. So I spent a lot of time in the doctor's office that day as the doctor was talking to me about the changes in my life that needed to now be made. And the big change was that I had to completely change my diet. And the doctor began to talk to me and brought someone in to begin to talk to me about the fact that a lot of stuff that I was now eating that I could not eat anymore. And I had to go and, and someone was going over with me the things that I would be allowed to eat and the things that I had to let go of. And it seemed like everything that I enjoy eating, everything that was a part of my natural diet that the person in the doctor's office told me that I could no longer eat those kind of things. And as the doctor and the person who was there in the office was sharing with me what I could and could not eat, I was somewhat rebelling against them because I did not want to accept what they were saying to me and the fact that I now had to change my diet. And I remember the last conversation I had with the doctor before I left the office. He said to me, Charles, if you do not change your diet, if you do not start eating different foods. Then if you keep on eating what you've been eating, then you one day will die of your diabetes. And the choice that you have to make is the choice whether you want to live or whether you want to die. So if I didn't change my diet, the doctor said I would die. And if I didn't change the foods that I was eating, the doctor said I would die. If I did not get a new diet and start eating new foods that, that were, were, was comparable for someone like me who had diabetes, then I could live and I could live a healthy life. So I left the doctor's office that day with that choice. The choice was, did I want to live a good and healthy life? Or did I want to live a life where I would be sick all the time? 
and I would eventually die at a young age of the illness called diabetes. And the reason that I bring that up is that the same thing really happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, when I walked down the church and I gave my life to him. And, and, and when I gave my life to him, I understood from the preacher that, that if I wanted to live the life that Jesus had now called me to live once I gave my life to him, that, that I had to change my diet. I had to change the way that I was living my life. And if I didn't change the way I was living my life, if I didn't change my spiritual diet, then, then I would one day die. But if I changed my diet and started eating the things that God said I ought to eat in the word of God, the promise God to me was that I would live forever. So I had to make a choice of those things that I enjoy doing in the world against what the word of God said. And I knew that if I did not change my spiritual diet, that one day I would die and go to hell and not be with God. But if I changed my spiritual diet, then I would not really die. My body would die, but my spirit would be with God in eternity. I believe a lot of us today in the church, and the reason I bring that up, because I believe that a lot of people in the church today are eating the wrong kinds of spiritual food. I have seen the change in the 40 years I've been a minister of the gospel and in the 50 years almost I've been a Christian that there is a change in the church. There is a change in the household of faith. There is a change in the way that the Christians today are living their life compared to the way Christians were living 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And I believe the reason there is a change, I don't expect any by to say amen is because we have changed the things that we are eating today in the church. The diet has changed. We no longer feast on spiritual food. We feast on things of the world and we try to have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Praise God. And, and it's reflective in the fact that a lot of us, praise God, are, are messed up in our personal lives. You see, there, there, some years ago, I was, I was dealing with a, a couple, praise God, and, and I was trying to share with the couple, praise God, that they were cutting some things out of their life that was important in their spiritual diet. And what was important in their spiritual diet, y'all got to catch this now, is that once they stop going to church, once they stop going to church, once they stop going to Bible study, once they stop reading the word of God every day in their life, something began to develop in their marriage and, and in their personal lives. You, you see, most of us don't understand that when you are feeding yourself spiritually that you are strengthening your faith in the Lord praise God and 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 see most of us don't realize that there are things that are gonna come your way and and some of those things are gonna come your way today or they may not come to Tuesday or they may not come your way to Friday they might not be this week they might be two weeks from now they might be a month from now and if we don't take the eat the right kind of spiritual food so that when that thing comes in our life that God is trying to prepare us for that we're not able to deal with those things in our life when you are not feasting on the word of God praise God when you're not feasting on those things that God says you got to eat in your life in your spiritual walk with God what happens is you can be in the church but you can be in the church and spiritually dead just because you're in the church church are you singing the choir are you preach behind the pulpit are you play the musical instrument it doesn't mean you are a spiritually alive in the lord there are a lot of living walking dead in the church because spiritually we are not connected to the lord jesus christ it's because we are eating the wrong kinds of food
That's why there's so much meanness so time in the church. That's, see, see, and the problem is, the problem is that, that if you're not eating the right kind of spiritual food, then what we eat daily is we consume social media. We consume political viewpoints. We follow the cultural trends. We get into the secular viewpoint. And what it does, it weakens our faith and it stunts our spiritual growth. You ought not to be the same, in the same place spiritually as you were five years ago or ten years ago. You ought to be growing in the Lord. You ought to have some more muscles in your faith in God if you are eating the right kinds of food. What are the consequences? This is what I see. A lot of us are mentally, praise God, and emotionally and spiritually weakened in our Christian walk with God. So we lack the wisdom and the power to fight and be victorious over storms in our life over trials and sometimes setbacks, disappointment and attacks and, and troubles in our lives. You see, I understood that if I was going to be healthy, that I had to eat the right kind of food, that I've changed my diet, you know, and, 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 and praise God, Kathy, praise God, she, she made me for Thanksgiving, praise God, some dressing. And you know, she made me a whole lot of dressing for Thanksgiving, and I like dressing. So she made me this big thing of dressing. And I just couldn't wait to Thanksgiving. But the problem was that the dressing had things that I wasn't supposed to eat. <laughs> praise God, praise God. So the more dressing I ate, I ate dressing on Thanksgiving afternoon. I ate dressing and macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving night. I woke up on Friday and I ate dressing and, and, and praise God, and macaroni and cheese. I had it for lunch and, and then I had dressing and, and macaroni and cheese and other stuff for dinner. Then I woke up on Saturday and, and I came home for lunch and I had some more dressing because was still more dressing left and I had more macaroni and cheese. Matter of fact, we ran out of macaroni and cheese and I said to my wife that you need to make some more macaroni and cheese because we ran out of macaroni and cheese. And, 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 and Taz, the more I ate the macaroni and cheese and dressing, I started to notice that I was starting to get sluggish again and, and I was starting not to be able to see good and, and I knew that there was something wrong with me and I was too scared to check my blood my blood pressure and and my diabetes level because i knew that i had messed up and i understood that even though i like the chicken and dress and praise god that the chicken and dressing had stuff in it that was not good for my health praise god oh i'm talking to somebody today and, and there's a lot of stuff in life that you and i feast on and we eat on and we know that it's not good for our spiritual diet with God, but because we like it, because it tastes good, because it feels good, because it looks good, we continue to feast on stuff that separates us from God, that didn't put us in the right place with God. And what happens is we walk around spiritually dead because we are not into the things or eating the things that we should eat that will put us in the right place with God. So I know that I cannot eat bread anymore. Somebody would say, Pastor, a little, little bread won't hurt you. Yes, it will. Because there's some things you just can't eat one piece. See, I understand me, praise God. People are always trying to tempt me that, to eat a little something. You know, if you just eat sweets, you know, you know it, and it, it won't bother. Yes, it will. Because if I get a taste of one little sweet thing, Praise God. You see, I know I don't know how to stop. 
And I, and I know, praise God, I'm, I hope I'm helping somebody today. See, I want to help you understand. See, if you're going to be in the right place with God spiritually, then you got to understand that there are things that you got to do that's going to strengthen your faith in the Lord. In the book of Revelations, God told the church of Sardis, he said, listen, I got one thing against you. He said, I know people think you are doing great things. And, and I know outwardly you look like your church is on fire. You're feeding the hungry. You're clothing the naked. You're doing mighty things in the street for people trying to save lives. But he said, he said, the problem is that you are spiritually dead. You are good church members, but you are not people who are good disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you got to to understand that you might be a good church member, but it doesn't mean that you are doing the things that you ought to do, praise God, in order to be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you're a good church member, but are you a good disciple of Jesus Christ? I know you sing in the choir. I know you're the pastor of the church. I know you are a usher. I know you are a deacon. But it does not mean, praise God, that you are spiritually in the right place with God. You see, the problem in the church is we got too many people who are not eating the right diet. Somebody said, Pastor, what should we do then? What should we do? What should we do? Turn with me to the book of Acts, the second chapter. How, 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 do I, how do I eat the right kind of food? Come with me in Acts, sec, the second chapter. Praise God. I, I just want to, I just want to help you. Praise God. This is what happened with the early church, Sylvia. Here's what happened. We did a little bit in Bible study. Here's what it said. Remember the, the, the early church, the first church, had only 120 people. That was the first church, the church in Antioch. It only had 120 members. Acts 2, praise God. Look at verse 42. It wasn't until the day of Pentecost, after Pentecost, that the church began to grow. Praise God. Acts 2, praise God. Had 120 members. That's all God needed, praise God, in order for God to do his thing. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Why were they spiritually healthy? Why were they spiritually healthy? Here's what it says. Verse 42 in Acts 2. And they continually steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine is dealing with in their teaching. Watch this. And fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. There are four things they did. What did they do? They, they, they continued in the teaching of the apostles. Amen. Amen. In the doctrine of the apostles, amen. Watch this. They, they, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, amen. They steadfastly stood on the word of God. They steadfastly stood on the word of God. So watch this. And what did they do? And fellowshiped and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Watch this. They followed the teachings of the apostles. Then they fellowship with one another. Then it said they broke bread together. Amen. And then it said they prayed together. Amen. So what, what, what is the food that you got to eat? Amen. You got to eat this, this, this apple, which is the word of God. Then you got to eat this banana, praise God, which is the fellowship of the believers. Then you got to pray, oh, my goodness, praise God. Oh, my goodness, praise God. Then you got to learn how to break bread together. And then you got to learn how to pray every day. Now watch this. They just didn't wait to Sunday to do it, praise God. They ate this apple on Monday and Tuesday, on Wednesday and Thursday, on Friday and Saturday, and on Sunday. They ate this banana on Monday and Tuesday, on Wednesday and Thursday, on Friday and Saturday, and then on Sunday. They ate these grapes on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday, and on Sunday. They prayed on Monday. They prayed on Tuesday. They prayed all day on Wednesday. They prayed on Thursday. They prayed on Friday. They prayed on Saturday. They prayed on Sunday. 
Guess what happened when they ate the apple, the banana, the grapes, and the orange? It says in the next verse, and then fear came upon every soul, and miracles, woo, many miracles, wonders, signs were done through the apostles. You see, when you eat the right kind of food, praise God, then you got power. So if everybody was eating the right kind of food, if everybody ate an apple, if everybody ate a banana, if everybody ate the grapes, if everybody ate the orange, then the Bible said, then wonders and signs were performed. Can you imagine people coming in the church if everybody was eating an apple, eating an orange, standing on the word of God, fellowshipping with one another, praise God, breaking bread together, and then we were praying together. Folk would walk in broken, but they would leave out healed. Folk would come in depressed, but they would be restored. The blind would come in, but they would see again. The spiritual dead would come in, but they would walk out alive. What the Bible says, that if you want some power in your life, if you want to walk under the anointing of God, then you got to learn how to eat. So you got to eat not just the word of God on Sunday morning, but you got to get in your word. You got to get in your word. You got to study the word of God. Praise God. Watch this. Watch this. Notice what it said. It says in verse 44, then all the believers were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and good and divided them among all and anyone that had need. This will I like in verse 46. So continually daily with one accord in the temple. Watch this, Sean. They went to church every Sunday, every day. Amen. So every day, praise God. Come here, come here, come here, Dwayne. Praise God. Come here, come here, Ted. You got the little baby. Come on up here. Praise God. Amen. It said that, that they went... Praise God that they went to the temple every day. Praise God. They went to the temple every day. Amen. I know we got a once a week limit on God. Praise God. But the early church didn't have one day a week on God. Praise God. And it said praise God because they went to the temple every day. Praise God. Amen. You know we got God on a time clock now. And I know I can't go past 12 o'clock now. Praise God. But this used to be the Lord's day. Amen. Praise God. And it didn't matter. But praise God. Notice what it said. And so they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Notice what it said. When you eat the right kind of food, they started praising God and having favor with all the people. And then the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Well, what is it saying to me? That if we start eating the right kind of food, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. That if Barnes United Methodist Church, Barnes Baptist Church, Barnes Apostolic Church, Barnes Pentecostal Church, Barnes Catholic Church, Barnes Jesus Only Church, if we started eating the right kind of food, I know y'all want to put a denomination on this, but when we get to heaven, there's not a denomination. You're not going to get in based on the church you was affiliated with, but what you're going to get in based on whether or not you ate the right kind of food when you were down on the earth. And if you eat the right kind of food, and Jesus said, I'm the right kind of food, because he said, I'm the bread of life. And he said, if anyone eats of me, he will live and he shall not die. So every moment of your life, you got to feast on Jesus. And if you feast on Jesus, you will not die. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you eat the right kind of food, if you feast on Jesus, you will not die. Tell another neighbor, say, neighbor. If you feast on Jesus, you shall be restored. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, if you eat the right diet, then blessings will flow. Neighbor, if you eat the right diet, 
then the favor of the Lord shall be upon you. If you eat the right diet, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I see your breakthrough coming. If you eat the right diet, neighbor, if you eat the right diet, I see your healing coming. Neighbor, if you eat the right diet, I see God opening up that door for you. Neighbor, if you eat the right diet, take a neighbor, if you eat the right diet, I know that storms in your life, but I'm so glad that if you eat the right diet, you got a God that'll step in the midst of the storms in your life and say, peace, be still. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to eat the right diet. I'm going to eat it on Monday. I'm going to eat it on Tuesday. I'm going to eat it on Wednesday. I'm going to eat the right diet on Thursday. I'm going to eat the right diet on Friday. I'm going to eat the right diet on Saturday. I'm going to eat the right diet on Sunday. And I declare that if you eat the right diet, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Is there anybody in here? You got a testimony that I ate the right diet and the Lord made a way for me. I write the right diet and God lifted me higher. Praise God. I got left this bread alone. I got left this sweet alone. But I got to eat the right diet. And if I eat the right diet, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. If I eat the right diet, won't God, won't God, won't God, won't he strengthen my faith? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And if you eat of me, you will never go hungry, and you shall never, you shall never die. You got to make the decision. My doctor told me that if I wanted to live, I had to change my diet. And I made the choice that I wanted to live. So all that stuff that I used to love, I had to let it go. And God is saying, if you want to live, you got to change your diet. And you can't go to church and think that going to church is going to get you in. You got to change your diet. Because it's not about whether you are a member of this church or some church in the city. But what, what, what counts here is your name written in the book of life. Praise God. John, praise God. I had to change my diet. This is your opportunity while they sing. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Will you live or will you die? So the question is, what are we eating? 
The doors of the church are open if you want to come for prayer, if you want to come to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to become a member of the church, all of those things are open to you right now. Don't let this time pass you by. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. We ought to celebrate. The seven says we re the Bible says that the heavens rejoice over one soul. Hallelujah. Come on, make your way. Great is that faithfulness. Great is that faithfulness. As I look back over my life, I can see higher love is guiding me. Even though I've done wrong, you've never left me alone. You forgave me, and you kept on blessing me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Because I can pass this fell in love, they I do every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. You turned my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. You turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Oh, for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I weak and worn. Pray you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. You turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Oh, for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm, strength when I wake at one. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. And never repent of what you've done for me. Pastor, can I say this? If the church wants to sit and be complacent, then fine. But I want you to know, I don't know about no other church, but can I make this announcement? Things are changing here at Barnes. Yes. Yes. It ain't church like it used to be. If you don't get in the flow with the Lord, you're going to miss it. 
If you don't get in the flow with the Lord, you're going to miss it. If you don't get in tune with God, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Think it not strange if you see strange people start to come up in here. It's okay. It's okay. We got to trust God. We got to keep on leaning on God. And we can't turn them away. We can't turn them away. Church as usual is no more. I want you to hear me. Church as usual is no more. I'm going to say it again. Church as usual is no more. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Does that make sense? The answer is yes. Does that make sense? Amen. The answer is yes. Woo. We want to just bless God for using this man of God to illustrate to us the way we should be eating. The Oh, come on, y'all. We got to do better than that. The way that we should be eating. Change our diet. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of nowhere. You turned my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of nowhere. You turned my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I wink and warn. You've been. If we could all stand, if there's nothing else before the house, if we all stand. And I want you to stretch your hands this way to this great man of God. Stretch your hands to this way great man of God. Father God, we truly thank you, O oh God. We ask that you restore unto him, O oh God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, all that he has poured out, O oh God. All that he has labored, O oh God, for this word, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to order his footsteps, O oh God. We ask that as he goes out into the hedges and the highways to compel men to come, that you would order his footsteps, O oh God, and that you would put your shield of protection around him, O oh God, and that you would give him even greater knowledge, O oh God, deeper depths in your word, O oh God, that the folks may come through the door running, asking and saying, what must I do to be saved? It's not about Barnes United Methodist Church, O oh God, but as the man of God said, it's about is our name written in the Lamb's book of life, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for using him on today, oh God. We thank you for his generosity, oh God. We thank you for this heart of your people, oh God, for your people, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you will report and that you would stay, that you would be with him and that you will lead and guide him in everything that he does, oh God. And bless the first lady that walks by his side as well, oh God. And all those that are associated, oh God, with Barnes, oh God, we ask for a special blessing. We ask that you go to every household that is in this place, oh God. God, we ask that everybody that is going to watch this, oh God, that you even go and permeate their household, oh God, and help us to understand that we have to eat the right things, oh God. We have to come into fellowship with you, oh God, and we have to labor in the word, and we have to labor in what you have said for us to do, oh God. Now, if all hearts clear, oh God, we ask that we be anointed afresh to eat and equip to do the right things that you have called us to do, oh God. Let us be this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. You